coming behind and being able to attract 21st century technology entrepreneurs to this valley because of that infrastructure. And we need to change it. And we can find creative ways to do that. We can find ways to uh, you know, manage the 140 million plus dollars that come through uh, the city each and every year as part of the, the city budget uh, to make sure that we're doing our best to invest in our future. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start with the questions <clears throat> from my board, and we'll start at that end of day with Chris. And uh, topic number one is the economy of Grand Junction, and some of you have addressed this a little bit. Um, Grand Junction economy has been shrinking as, as the population. Um, how would you invest the city's money to turn that around? We have to make ourselves very attractive to uh, businesses that want to relocate here. GJEP right now is, uh, they're, they're out trying to develop businesses in, you know, looking in Chicago, in San Jose, California, trying to attract entrepreneurs to come to Grand Junction. But you can't get a direct flight from here to either of those cities. If, if a Boulder has direct flights to those cities and you're a, a small company that's going to travel, you know, depend on airline to make business meetings, your choices are going to be obvious. So we have to do things in a really good way uh, and, and a and a thinking outside the box way to attract those businesses. Maybe that's subsidizing seats on airlines to get those flights here for a small amount of time so that we can establish uh, those businesses and their families moving to this valley. There's so many things that you can't talk about in a one minute response to this question. That's one idea. A rec center, finishing Magic Park, full trail systems are other ideas for quality of life issues to attract diverse economies to our valley. Could you repeat the question, please? Uh, it's about improving the economy of Grand Junction. Uh, Grand Junction's economy has been shrinking as well as the population. How would you invest the city's money to turn that around? I think it's premature to talk about in specific investments of limited tax dollars. I think we have to operate very carefully because our, our dollars are limited. And it's, it is somewhat along the lines of uh, why I'm opposed to am Amendment 2B. I think we have to first compare all of our needs and set priorities in a manner that hasn't been done yet. It's at least possible that the only way we're really going to draw people into this town is to give away money. We lost a potential big business because Pueblo offered them $8 million and we can only offer them $1 million. Now, I'm not saying that I, I want to go into the business of paying companies to move to town, but I want us to be realistic about them, how we do spend our money. And we as a community look at it, all of our options before we spend our limited dollars in any one particular area. Well, I think right now that um, the city and all of the economic development partners are working really hard on gathering some information um, from all around the valley and recording and reporting statistics so that we have a really true picture of what is happening and what has happened in the Grand Junction economy. I think that there's a lot of um, different tools out there that are being looked at right now. There's a lot of different incentive programs, um, special zones. There's, there's just a really a lot of things that I think are really exciting that City Council as well as all the partners are taking a look at right now. And I hope that we can gather a lot of information from different communities and cities that have used a lot of these different tools and find some that'll work really great for us to attract more businesses. I think the city council and the city have started down a path that I very much agree with, and that is they're starting with market research. Um, they're starting with an assessment of what are the strengths and weaknesses that we have as a valley. Um, what are our competitive advantages, if we have competitive advantages. And then matching that up uh, through site selectors with industries so that we know how we stand against some of the industries that we want to come to this valley. Um, I think it's something that should have been done quite a long time ago, but I appreciate the fact that they're doing it right now. And then once we have that information, then I think we have to be very innovative. And one, one approach I think um, we should take a look at very, very closely is what New York State is doing right now in their approach uh, from a taxation standpoint of, of bringing 
uh, new companies into upstate New York as well as encouraging entrepreneurs and doing it all through host universities, which we have a great one here. I'm biased on that, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for your answers there. Uh, topic number two is Tabor, and we're going to start with Dennis and go this way. Or actually, we'll go this way, Dennis, Chris, and then the next one will go the other direction. So, um, should the city, count, city council and city of Grand Junction include all of its sales taxes in its Tabor calculations, as Mesa County does? Dennis, you get to go first. As some of you may be aware, I've been heavily involved in this issue and brought the issue to the forefront, both of the city and the county, in that the city of Grand Junction and Mesa County, because of some, some activity that occurred in 2007 that was not made public, had, had decided, uh, the county at least, has decided that um, they would stop including all of their sales tax. The city, in fact, had been not been including all their sales tax in Tabor for many years before that. Uh, I believe that since the city is now the only known entity in Colorado that is following this practice, that it's time for the city to get on board with what the county is doing and what everybody else in the state is doing. And if I'm elected, I will try to bring that issue back to the forefront again, because as our economy grows, the amount of tapered dollars that are subject to uh, being taken away from the taxpayers will increase. Uh, I think most of the communities that aren't uh, counting their sales taxes have already de-boosted completely from Tabor anyway, so it's not an issue for them. Uh, <coughs> On my record as not being a big Tabor fan, I think we elect uh, representatives and higher professionals in our uh, municipal governments to uh, act as good agents with an, and shepherd our tax dollars wisely. That doesn't mean we don't hold them accountable. Uh, I think uh, uh, John Shaver offered an opinion on the sales tax as part of Tabor. I agree with his opinion, and I, I stand by the way the city is calculating it now. So I don't think they should have it. I think they're following the law as written. Uh, that said, uh, I want to be sure that we, as a community, invest all of our tax dollars wisely and shepherd them accordingly. Uh, we, uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility to manage tax revenues in, in a wise manner. As a, uh, a corporate uh, uh, budget manager for many, many years, uh, I wish I could continue. I'm not sure, Kevin, from a sales tax standpoint, are you driving at two B and whether no, we're in a tax? We're I think the third question. Sales tax <laughs> overall, sales tax revenue in Great Junction is calculated differently than the other states. I think you know I have to go uh, according to um, a little bit what Chris said in the sense that um, John Shaver, as a city attorney, um, I think we have to take the opinion of a very good attorney that if he feels um, that we are doing that under the law, that I, I accept his opinion. I feel similarly, 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 to <laughs> say that again as well. I do think um, that John Shaver does make a very, very concerted effort on making sure that our city does what we're supposed to do, do it well and do it legally. I think we're in the right place as well. Now this next question is about referendum 2B, and it's going to have three parts, so you're going to have three minutes to answer, uh, give you a little bit extra time, because there's there's three different parts of the question that we're going to ask. Uh, and the lead in is, you know, it authorizes the city to collect $27.5 million needed to complete what they're calling the Western Beltway Project. Uh, it gives voter approval for assurance of a new 16.5 million in debt bond and for the application of 11 million in Tabor money, including that which is set aside for the retirement of the Riverside Parkway debt and any additional excess Tabor money that might be available in the future. The plan would make a dog leg by widening 25 road up to F and a half road and then widening F and a half road to 24 road and then widening 24 road between I-70 and the mall um, business loop basically. Please answer as briefly as you can the following three questions. Um, and it's one minute per question, so it's a total of three, and Kim, you're going to go first this time. So what is your take on this plan? A, is it disruptive to Grand Junction businesses? B, is it worth going into debt for? And C, could the money be spent better elsewhere? Here is a 
26 and 50 uh, running running along here in the Riverside Parkway right next to it. And, and, and the plan that Marty described earlier has to do with this orange line here that went wide 24 down to F and a half. And right now, you know, F and a half kind of goes over here to the theater and, and, and from then it kind of turns into Ho Chi Minh Trail and then it picks up again and it's real, it's real thing. But this is a heavily uh, commercialized section of town right here. 25 right. So you're laying ground man. So Kim, you're the first and like I said it's a three parter. Is it disruptive to the range range of businesses? Is it worth going into debt for and could the money be spent better elsewhere? Those are tough questions. Um, I'm sure it could be disruptive to some businesses, but um, growth is always painful. Um, and I'm sure that <clears throat> we have a lot of consist consideration taken into the two years of planning um, that the city expects that it would take for them to work on the design. And I'm sorry, you're gonna have to tell me okay, those so letters again. It was disruptive grand is, is it worth going into that for? I do believe that it's worth going into debt for. Right now, um, <clears throat> the first thing is the bottlenecking on 24 and 25 Road is really starting to cause some serious safety issues, and I'm really concerned about that. Secondly, I think rates are never, ever going to be this low again. Construction materials and construction costs historically don't ever go down. I think we should finish this project before we start a new one. In my opinion, it's like leaving a half-built house if we stop here and then start on a different project. Um, <clears throat> and I think once we get finished with this project, then we can prioritize um, new projects. Our Rise and Drive filing 2 and 3, North Avenue, 29 Road. Um, there's a lot of streets on the east side of the city that don't have curb, gutter, and sidewalk and deal with a lot of um, flooding issues. So I think we need to complete one and move on to the next one, and I'm in favor. I think I probably just answered that. <laughs> but I do think um, it's just a matter of prioritizing. Um, and like I said, I think that we need to finish one project before we start another and then look at the list and prioritize and do a really good job with managing our money for the next uh, infrastructure improvements that we need. It's a difficult question, I think, because I feel like we're second guessing um, existing city council, and, and I'm not totally comfortable with that, but I'll give you an answer anyway. <laughs> um, first off, I, I think it is worth going into debt to develop the right infrastructure to grow, to grow this community. But I stress it's worth going into debt to develop the infrastructure. So where that's leading um, me is I wish this had been done such that um, both Horizon Drive and North Avenue were also on, on uh, part of the battle. I, I differ from Kim. Um, I built projects where you start and you, you do a major component and you add to that component later on. Um, I don't necessarily agree that all this money should have gone to one project, especially when we have a significant issue on Horizon Drive and a very significant issue on North Avenue as well. The third question, that was your first question, is it is going to be disruptive. You can't tear up corridor of this nature and not be disruptive. I don't, but I don't know how you get around that when um, you just have to have good planning from the people that are doing the construction side of it, irrespective of which project. You've got to have um, good people that are working on minimizing that disruption as much as possible by any, any infrastructure. Um, of this magnitude and change is going to cause disruption that's has to. Um, but talking about the ballot measure in particular, it, as if I had been on the city council at the time, I would not have supported the language as it's written. Uh, and that's mainly because I think it's too narrow. I would have supported a language that would have given some leeway in how, that, uh, how those dollars are invested kind of in the same way that Rick is talking about, that including Horizon Drive, uh, uh, you know, North Ave, and other corridors that might have been a little more necessary from a safety standpoint uh, on the front end. 
Uh, that said, I will support the ballot measure uh, because that is money that's going to be invested back in our community. It's local contractors, it's local workers that are going to work on that project for the next three to five years uh, in, in pieces as far as developing, uh, uh, doing, doing all the infrastructure work. F and a half road definitely needs to be completed out to 24. 24 needs to be widened. I don't know if anybody's ever sat at that light at G Road and 24 and tried to make a turn or not make a turn. It's it, it's it's hazard. And I live off of 25 Road as well, so that's a really, really bad intersection and something has to be done to redesign the traffic flow into that Sinclair, Sinclair gas station. That's that's the dangerous spot of the road. Now that said, I think if we were going to float a bond for $14.5 million or $16 million, whatever the final number is, in addition to you know the excess Tabor funds that we're talking about, we would have gotten more return on that investment in, in investing in, in other areas that would have had a quicker return, such as a rec center, uh, to make us more competitive with other communities of similar size in attracting new businesses to our community. I'm not saying that, 20, that the, the, river, the West End Beltway and that, that project doesn't have validity and doesn't need Done. It does. I don't think that that's the highest priority right now. That said, I will support the ballot measure because I see it as an investment in our community and jobs and keeping people here. Uh, and I don't think I need the other minute. Thank you. I definitely think this is going to be destructive to the existing businesses on 25 Road. And as someone pointed out, well, that kind of goes with territory when you do a construction project. But what's wrong with this one is there has been no communications with the people who have those businesses on that land along that road. No one has gone out to them and explained to them what's going to happen. In fact, I don't think that the, the city council has even seen the specifics of what's going to happen with that road. And whether or not it's going to expand to the east or the west. I, I asked Rich, Rich Englehart at a meeting a couple of weeks ago, and he, he said he's going to go to the east. And I said, what about those big towers? We're going to move them. How much does it cost to move those towers? We, we can't say, but it's in the numbers. And I think what has not happened here is the, the, the city doing its homework first, which is design that road, show people where it's going to be, and, and go to the people who right now are along that road and say, we're going to have to take 10 feet of your road here and we're going to take 10, I mean, of your property, and we're going to take 10 feet of the property that's used on the other side of the road. Or are you always going to go in one direction? I mean, it's just real nebulous as what they're going to do with 1.5 road. And the question of whether or not it's worth going into debt, I, I would say probably not because the community has not had any input into this decision. This, this plan was dropped on us, and it, most people read about it in the newspaper in December. In fact, the council had been talking about it, but not in public settings. I mean, they, they were, their meetings were officially public. You could have attended, but they weren't recorded, and they weren't reported upon. And I think before we make that kind of a debt commitment, we need to involve the community way more than we did in this issue. I think people we're, are totally surprised and can't believe that this has happened the way it has. It's nice to say I'm, I'm in favor of it, and I'm also in, I would be in favor of it spend it on, on a rec center or, or on a train station. But we don't have that much money, and it seems like that's not soaking in real well up here, is that we couldn't have done all of those things. We, we, had, we should have been making choices before we put this ballot issue up. And, and is it a wise use of money? I guess I, I would say not at this stage. You know, in fact, Marty said we're only deep bruising for the next for four additional years. In fact, we're deep bruising retroactive to 2012 because we're taking the money that's already been set aside, and we're planning on deep bruising from now until 2004. So we're really voting on a deep bruising effort that's for 12 years, and and and, and, and we intend to use that deep bruising to re, that revenue to, to pay back debt. And one of the things Marty pointed out when this thing was being discussed is the city is contributing no money to this. It's, everybody is coming to the taxpayers and saying, you taxpayers are going to have to give up your, your taper excesses that would normally be used to pay down the debt early and free up money in the future. Thank you. Okay, so that ends the boring portion of the, the program. Now it's up to you folks in the audience to create a little excitement here. Uh, normally we hand out tickets, but because we have a little bit less